Today's special free agency primer episode of the BS Podcast House, Don't Breathe Into the Phone, is brought to you by SeatGeek, our presenting sponsor, the easiest way to shop for the best tickets thanks to their revolutionary grading system. Guess what? I went to the SeatGeek headquarters in New York City on Tuesday. It was spectacular. A lot of love. A lot of love on both ends. It was great to see all the SeatGeek people. Right now, my listeners get $10 off baseball tickets the first time they use SeatGeek. Just use promo code BSMLB. BSMLB. Download the SeatGeek app today. Go right to SeatGeek.com. Also brought to you by a new podcast called Outside the Box. If you're a maker, a doer, an innovator, or a mere consumer who wants to get a peek behind the curtain, of some of the world's greatest organizations, the first episode features conversations with presidents and CEOs from organizations like the World Wildlife, uh, World Wildlife Fund, Feeding America, and more. Expect new episodes about things like corporate culture in the 21st century and inventive approaches to business with great insight from some of the brightest minds in the nation. That disqualifies you, House. Listen and subscribe to Outside the Box and Apple Podcast Stitcher or wherever you get your podcast. Speaking of podcasts, Wow. I've been involved in the rollout of a lot of podcasts in my life. Never have I seen uh, the anticipation and the sheer delight that we received when we unveiled House of Carbs, the new food podcast with Joe House. The art was great. People love the title. It's a House of Cards poster parody of, of Joe House sitting in a chair looking like he just ate. Everything about it is fantastic. We taped the pilot episode on Wednesday. Nephew Kyle said it was the single greatest podcast he'd ever produced, which only mildly hurt my feelings because he's produced a couple of mine. House, you got to be feeling good. Well, we can only go in one direction from this high, 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 high point, and that is straight down. But look, uh, this is giving the people what they want, not to steal a line from our good buddies, Jalen and Jacoby. Yeah. Well, this is a food podcast for the hungry people by the hungry people. We are already out in the Twitter sphere belly sourcing. Some people like to crowdsource. We're going to belly source. Mm. So many great suggestions already for topics, for guests, for themes. And we uh, have already a, a, a wonderful array of guests lined up for the next, you know, uh, six to eight episodes. You know, both the Ringer friends, Ringer staff, great food minds, great food cookers. So. It's it's kind of lighting up. The stars are coming together. Just this morning, David Chang texted us and said, I want in on House of Carbs. I want to come on. He invited himself on. People invite themselves on House of Carbs because it makes them hungry, and they just want to talk about being hungry with you. That's what you do. You make people that hungry. Is, well, I, I'll tell you a pro tip not to uh, ruin too much of the, the pilot episode that's already been recorded, but we had on – as a guest, Adam Rappaport from Bon Appetit. Mm. And, and during the conversation, Adam was going through a couple of very outstanding recent food experiences and some recipes, and I, I confided to him. I asked him for some suggestions on the right way to do a food podcast. Yeah, I confided to him as he was running through the stuff that I was getting. I was starving. I hadn't eaten before the podcast. <laughs> yeah. And I said, it seems like I should eat. He said, no, no, no. Don't you dare eat before the podcast house. You want to be hungry. You want to come away from that thing starving. So I, so I really appreciated that advice. That's really good advice. See, that's that's a veteran food podcaster. Not being threatened by an up-and-comer, but actually helping out and looking out for him. So listen, everyone can subscribe to House of Carbs right now because the first episode is going to drop midnight, July 4th, heading into July 5th. So subscribe to House of Carbs. Go search for it on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Go check it out. And finally, we're brought to you by the ringer.com. Where guess what? I wrote a column today. Yeah. I wrote a column. I read it. I, I wrote, actually read it. I wrote a column about how to save the Clippers. I pretended I was Steve Ballmer's second consultant after Jerry West. So that that uh that column is up on TheRinger.com. We're going to talk about it briefly on this podcast. We're also going to do a free agency primer and uh, talk about the Chris Paul trade and Phil Jackson and some other stuff. But first, Pearl Jam. All 
All right, here we go. Friday, 10 a.m. West Coast time. So if anything happens, um, don't hold it against us as we're recording this podcast. I just want to tell a quick story of why I'm sick. Because I've been sick all week. Yeah, we were supposed to record an hour ago. And by the way, speaking of hungry, I deliberately did not eat lunch. Oh, no. So now I, I'm really, I'm genuinely starving for this free agency hoop spot. I like a hungrier house is usually a better podcast. What I never like is <laughs> is the uh, the satiated house is not one of my favorites. So I had to fly to New York on Monday morning. And I had like the se- like a seven o'clock flight. So I had to leave the house. at. I always cut it close. So I'd leave my house at five. I always try to get there like an hour before. I don't fall asleep till like 12, 12, 15, oh. something like that. Yuck. 2.30, my daughter comes in the room because dumb Willie shat all over the carpet in her bedroom. Oh, no. 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning, Dumb Willie decides, I'm going to go into Zoe's room and take a big shit all over the place. <laughs> oh, Willie. So my rule with this stuff is always just let my wife do everything. That's been the rule when both of our kids, because I'm just, if I get woken up out of a sleep, I'm about the most incoherent, useless person imaginable. Like you might as well just, it's it's like I've had a lobotomy. So my wife's up there, but she's yelling and she's mad. And then she's mad at me that I'm not helping. I never really fall back asleep. And then I fly yeah. across country. Oh. Throw in me sitting next to the coffin guy. That guy was there because, of course, it was like all, everything was prearranged. By the time I landed, that was it. So I've been sick all week. But yeah, uh, right. dumb Willie, I, I love him. But man, man, he's dumb. Why do they shit on the rugs? That's the part I don't get. That's Just a, shit well, on the you know floors. What? No, they don't. They they prefer the texture of their paws. I have a puppy. I have a 10-month-old puppy. He only shits on rugs. He doesn't shit on the hardwood floor. We had Ru- Rufus, God rest his soul. Rufus could have been on, on a basketball court. And if there was a one-foot-by-one-foot one piece of rug on the basketball court, he would have squatted over it and took a shit on it. Yeah. Anyway. That's what they like. All right. So, sorry for my voice. That's why I'm sick. Blame Dumb Willie. All right. We have a lot to go through here. This is uh, June 30th. Holy mackerel. Uh, where do you want to start? You want to start with free Let's agency with or you want to start column. with Chris Paul? Say again? You want to start with Chris Paul and my column? Well, you, you did a podcast already about uh, Chris Paul, so we can sort of you know, proceed with that Why don't quickly. I, let's, uh, get your, let's get your thoughts really quick. Because I gave my thoughts well, on the I, Ringer I, NBA show, and I, I actually was really impressed that the Clippers got what they got for somebody who was leaving anyway. I thought uh, the Rockets played, or, or the Clippers played a little bit of poker there with the Rockets because Chris Paul just could have signed there. So to get two pretty half-decent assets, Beverly on a good contract, Lou Williams on a good contract, they got... A pick that will be in the twenties, but still, at least it's a pick. They got Sam Decker; is not bad. That's better than nothing. Usually, you see the guy just leaves, and the team doesn't get anything. It, it's much better than nothing, and I know that your column today is mostly tongue in cheek, but I actually grew quite enamored of your suggestion for for the trade with Philly. Yeah, I think that the idea of getting Jaleel Okafor from Philly out to the Clippers and flipping back. Uh, Jamal Crawford and Pat Beverly has a kind of brilliance to it. It's really, really great for Philly. That's the one element of this season that's coming up for Philly that they're kind of missing, which is the veteran stewardship, um, guys that have been around the block that that, uh, can kind of teach them the right way to play. They have all these these kids. Covington isn't um, a brand-new player in the league. But Beverly and Crawford, Crawford especially has, in the last like 18 months to me, achieved a kind of eminence. Mm. I believe that he is a you know, um, very thoughtful person. Uh, we've seen him in a lot of different... Uh, you know, he's become a lot more vocal than I remember him um, than, than in, in his career. Uh, and, and I'm mainly thinking about him in, in kind of non-basketball-related media. Yeah. But I, I have been impressed by, uh, by Crawford. And, and, and it really started with uh, J.J. Redick had him on when their season ended last year, a full year ago, not this most recent season, on J.J.'s new podcast. And the two of them together were really contemplative and thoughtful. And I was like, damn, that Jamal Crawford, 
he could be a coach. Yeah. He's a beloved teammate. I think when he retires, he could do whatever he wants. And, you know, I want to talk about the Clippers in a second, but the reason that trade makes sense for Philly, instead of just going and overpaying some point guard, you get Beverly and Crawford together for like 18, 19 million a year this year and next year. Beverly is one of the best contract assets in the league and perfect for Philly because he can play off the ball and he's a good defender and Ben Simmons can still be the point forward. Crawford, this is what teams over and over again have screwed up. And this is why, you know, the Sixers fans are so excited right now and I don't blame them. They just went through four years of hell and now they have some assets, but they're not going to be good right away. This has never worked where you just throw a bunch of young players and don't put anyone around them who is an adult. It's never worked. If anything, it's, it's backfired and it's gone really badly. And, you know, you talk about the lessons of somebody like uh, Durant and Westbrook in OKC when they when they brought in like guys like Perk, Derek Fisher. Um, try not to laugh on that one, but you know, it's good to have adults in the locker room, and not just for the professionalism standpoint, but for advice for the Big Brother stuff. And you know, that's why that makes sense. But you know. That piece was tongue-in-cheek, but it also wasn't because I actually really do believe that the Clippers should blow it up. I don't think it makes any sense to pay Blake Griffin four years, $130 million. From what I've seen the last couple of years and from his injury history, I think it's just too risky. And even if he pans out, you're not beating the Warriors with Blake Griffin and Patrick Beverly and DeAndre Jordan. And Is there any chance? There's no chance. So... No chance, zero chance. I'm on record. I mean, I'm not going to – I have two things to say. First, I'm not going to pat myself on the back for what seems to be a pretty uh, easily reached conclusion. I said eight weeks ago on one of our conversations that I think the Clippers should blow it up, and the Clippers definitely yep. should blow it up. And they're halfway there. They can't there. really compete in the West, and they're halfway there. That's exactly right. The other thing I wanted to say, though – is my uh, compliments for, for what you did in today's article. That's the last time I'm down on my knees today on this podcast. All right, we'll fight People the rest of the podcast. People give us a hard time for me agreeing with you too much. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm back up off my knees. I'm not saying anything else nice to you for the rest of this podcast. But um, I want to give a quick my, – my, my quick take on the Chris Paul to Houston Wait, hold thing on. Is, before, is, before we what? hold that for one second. So yeah, the, the, the four blow-it-up moves in order – that were in the column. Please go read the column anyway, because it's funny. Let Blake Griffin go. Trade DeAndre Jordan to Milwaukee for Greg Monroe and a top three protected pick. Greg Monroe is an expiring contract. Trade Beverly plus Jamal Crawford's contract to Philly for Jaleel Lokafer and a heavily protected first round pick. And then, oh, and then trade Lou Williams for. Uh, a first round pick who will have value. Hey, everyone's going to want Lou Williams around the uh, either before the season or during the trade deadline. He's a cheap scorer off the bench. You do all of those things, all you have on the books next year is Austin Rivers at like 12 million a year and Wesley Johnson at six in an expiring contract, which you could stretch out if you wanted to. And that's it. And you would have basically a blank slate along with a top five lottery pick with the best free agent class of all time coming. And LeBron, people feel really confident, might go to L.A. and wants to go to L.A. and has his whole life potentially in L.A. And they would just You're clear the decks people. for it. Yeah. You've been saying it. You think he's going to L.A. I do. So I'd clear the decks for it. And not to spoil the column, but my point was if this doesn't happen and he chooses not to come, then you go to plan B, which is move the Clippers to Seattle, which is maybe what they should do anyway. I, I think you could make a case. You're much better off being the number one team in Seattle than the number two team in L.A., but that's a story for another podcast. I couldn't tell whether that was a joke or not. No, I, it's not a joke for me. I, I think the Clippers, I really genuinely honestly believe they missed their window. I think they had a four-year window here to kind of steal the city from the Lakers, and they just couldn't do it. You know, like think of... I laid it out in the piece, but all the things that Lakers did terribly since 2012, it was a comedy of errors. They couldn't have played it worse. They did everything wrong. It was a disaster. And meanwhile, the Clippers had two of the best eight players in the league and had, in 2014 and 15, two legitimate chances to win the title that they blew. And the window win closed. Win the title, you say? 
Yeah. It didn't feel like they were on the threshold of winning the title in either of those years. Well, well, they blew the Oklahoma City series in 2014. Like, they literally blew it. And the next round, San Antonio beat Oklahoma City. But the Clippers had always played San Antonio. I don't know. They matched up pretty well. They beat, they beat them the following year. And then 2015, they're up 19 with 14 minutes left against Houston. James Harden comes out of the game. He's checked out. And they blow it. The next round, they're playing the That's Warriors. It's going to be an all-timer. Yeah, it's an all-timer. It's an all-time what-if, too, because I, I think a lot of NBA history is different if the results of that game. Man, I watched that game again. You and I, one of my first podcasts when I came back to this one, we did a rehash because I didn't have my podcast. I had already left ESPN. I had no outlet to talk about that game. Yeah, It's an incredible game. I mean, not only do Corey Brewer and Josh Smith single-handedly win the game with threes, when which is ironic because they both suck at, th- at shooting three-pointers, and they're just nailing threes. <laughs> but did you know the Clippers missed 14 straight shots to end the game? It was the only way for them to lose. I mean, I don't remember it like a stat off the top of my head that that's how many they missed. Think how many that but it is. Was the only, that, that's, like, that's how you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. You miss every shot. They missed you know, 14 straight shots with set, like seven and a half minutes left to go. They missed every shot they took from that point on. And that's how they lost. And Josh, I mean, you could play that game, I would say, 100 times. And 99 times the Clippers win. I, I'm throwing out the stupid win expectancy because I hate that. I'm just saying every single aspect that had to go right for the Rockets went went right. And, you know, the Clippers go to the next round. They didn't really have a bench. But they did have Mark, Matt Barnes that year, which people forget. So they at least had five guys. And I don't know. The Warriors hadn't really, you know, gotten over that hump yet. You could even see in the finals with the Warriors. Remember the uh, the first couple games, they were a little, they had little nerves. They were a little nervous. Maybe they could have beaten them, but we'll never know. And it was still that rivalry between uh, Golden State and the Clippers. You know, it had that chippiness. Chris Paul getting into Steph Curry's chest was, was oh, yeah. a thing then. And that was a different Chris Paul. I don't I don't think he's that player anymore. What were you going to say about Chris Paul and the Rockets? Just that I think it's going to work. Uh, and I thought it was highly, 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 I don't know what the word is, funny, that Houston insisted on a particular strategy that delivered um, a wonderful result to them. That is, you know, shots at the basket and shots from the three-point line. And they were beaten by a team that insisted that they make uh, mid-range jumpers, and then they went out and got the best mid-range jumper uh, player in the league, you know, the, right. in, in, the, in the form of Chris Paul. Hey, as you were talking, Jacoby just emailed me or texted me. I'm still reeling from the House of Carbs title and logo. I love it. He, I showed it to him 24 hours ago. He's still told, still talking about it. People love House of Carbs. He was very nice on the Twitter, and I, I, I gave him a standing invitation to come on. So the Chris Paul thing, it's really interesting. First of all, tampering rules are dead. They're gone. <laughs> They're just gone. <laughs> this is, it's just crazy. How did? Well, how no, did, no, no. The it, players talk to each other. It, They're all, the players are allowed to talk. There's no tampering anymore. How does Houston know Chris Paul wants to play for them? They're not allowed to talk to him until July 1st. What are they? Daryl Morey told them. Daryl Morey got like James a... James Harden we, told him. Da, no, Daryl Morey got a Ouija board. He, he figured it out telepathically. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the league is like... They're not even trying to police this stuff. It's incredible. What is there to police? The the Warriors lured Kevin Durant last year, starting in, in February no, this of last was, year. This is way worse than that. This is way worse. This was Chris Paul deciding, without being allowed to talk to Houston, that he was going to play for Houston. What if Houston didn't want him to play? He talked to his friend James Harden. What's wrong with that? It's it's ridiculous. There are no tampering rules. They should just waive the tampering rules. Just say after the finals, everyone can tamper with everybody. Because that's what's happening anyway. This is absolutely ludicrous. It's incredible. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I'm not outraged at all by it. I don't know if I told this story on my podcast before, but I'm telling it. One of my favorite stories I've heard this decade was, um, I won't say what year, because I don't want to betray the person who told me this, but there was, a, there was a, a good free agent over the last few years, and Mitch Kupchak, everyone else is tampering and 
whisper campaigning and using players and Mitch Kupchak's like this old school, follow the book by the rules kind of guy. So he, there's this good free agent and the agent doesn't know that the Lakers are interested because they're, they're the only team not doing the reaching out whisper stuff at 1201. When that player became a free agent, the phone rings and it's Mitch Kupchak. He's like, Hey, it's Mitch Kupchak. We just wanted to express our interest in signing so-and-so. It's like, meanwhile, the entire league had been talking to him for months. It's, it's just like, I don't know what the league is doing with these tampering rules, but who, it, who cares? It's more fun this way. Um, Chris Paul to Houston. One thing that I haven't read that I thought was an interesting wrinkle to this. They basically had to get that deal done the day it got done because they wouldn't have been able to really fit him under the cap after July 1st unless they made a whole bunch of moves. The one thing they could have done that day, and this was like some glitch that was in the CBA, they could have they could have basically bought out Ryan Anderson the last three years of his deal and stretched it out for seven years. And it's like 60 million bucks. And then re-signed Ryan Anderson. So Can they still do that? No, no, no. This was this glitch that was going to uh, expire that day that they figured out oh. how to fix in the CBA. So all the Rockets would have to do is stretch him out and then just bring him back. But his contract would have been able to be extended over the course of like seven years. And that would have enabled them to have the money to pay Chris Paul. But they didn't have to do that because they're able to make this trade. And for the Rockets, it's like, wow, they gave up all this, money, all these assets for this guy that they're going to sign anyway. Well, the the key with getting him when they did was that now they have that giant exception, which is like, uh, I think it's almost twelve million bucks. They 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 can basically sign players to replace Williams and uh, and Beverly, and they you know they're going to be able to get a good free agent with with one of those exceptions. Yep. Yeah, it put them in the running for for this Paul George discussion. I mean, it's it's now possible. And it's, it's, I don't see it. Pri- before it would have been impossible. I don't see it. I I just think other teams can trump them. But it puts. I, them- I don't disagree. I'm just saying it. You know, the, the 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 way it went down created the possibility. It puts them in the running to be able to get somebody of that Danilo Den- Gallinari level of player. Let Can me ask you though, that? man, he'd have to take a major cut. He's not going to do that. He doesn't need to. He's the other option they have, I mean, I think they really like Anderson because of his shooting. I, you know, he got exposed last year in the playoffs because they were so undersized, um, and they had to basically play him as a as a stretch five, yeah. which was a disaster. But yeah, this is incredible. Nene got hurt, yeah. and that ruined their their, their their season. Yeah, it was pretty fluky. But um, although maybe not fluky that Nene got hurt, but you know they could always try to trade Anderson too and and put some extra first round picks to try to get it done. So, do you think James Harden and Chris Paul is enough? Because I don't. I don't either. There's one more move. <coughs> could be Carmelo. There has to be one more move. Could be Carmelo. Melo makes a ton of sense. I, I strongly endorse that um, as him rounding out the the, the group. If I'm a Knicks fan and I keep reading that they're going to buy out Carmelo, I would want to do a scent of a woman and take a flamethrower to that place because the guy's an asset. He could still score 23 to 25 a night. They we, have, we, we're going to buy him out? What the is, fuck are you doing? What makes the most sense for them to do with Melo is to wait. Yeah. Just let this next week. Let, this next, let, let the chips fall where they're going to fall over the next week and see where teams settle in, and then see what the market looks like and what you might get in, in return for Melo. Yeah, no kidding. They, they, this is what they're trying. Even James Dolan realized. He was saying to Phil Jackson, why am I going to buy this guy out? He's an asset. Yeah. Let's just wait. Come February, you know, if Houston's trying to get him or Cleveland or whoever, like you're, you're going to be able to get something for him. I would, I would not trade Carmelo. They don't even have to really wait till February. They, they could do this in October or November. I, shout out to Daryl Morey though, because that dude has repeatedly landed stars. It's really crazy. This is well, he knows that that's the way, the only way to compete for a title. I mean, yeah, but like I mean, the, he's he's landed James Harden, Dwight Howard when Dwight Howard was actually a star, and now Chris Paul in the last five years, three three in Houston, 
all We're, NBA guys that he landed in their primes or at the tail end of their primes. Um, when people in a town where really the Rockets play second fiddle, maybe third fiddle, and he was pretty much on his last legs there twice. I I would say he was on his last legs there the summer before the Harden trade when he stockpiled those picks and it turned out to be a shitty draft and it was like Royce White, Terrence Jones, all those dudes. And it just seemed like, you know, he wasn't going to, it just wasn't going to happen. And then, uh, you know, like... At the end of last season. uh, Yeah, this end of the season before, so at the end of the 2015 season. No, 16 season. 15, 16. Yeah. 15, 16. Yeah. Yeah. When the, when the Dwight right. thing backfired really badly, and it once again looked like he was on his last legs, and I think it'd be funny if Carmelo went to Houston. Hey, House. Yeah. I want to talk to you about a sandwich. Oh no, I'm I'm hungry. I want to talk to you about Jersey Mike's. Oh, Jersey Mike's is on board. Yeah. Jesus. My favorite is their number forty four. The buffalo chicken cheesesteak with Frank's red hot sauce, lettuce, tomato, and blue cheese dressing. You ever had that one? I would love that with Cholula. I would replace the Frank's with Cholula, but that's just me. They have a great buffalo chicken wrap. They're right down the street from us. They sent us a whole bunch of subs the other day. It was like Lord of the Flies, people trying to get the subs. Damn it. I want one of those. How do I I engineer that? I need them sent to my office right now. They've got this Jersey Mike's subs have become even more legendary because now you can order from Jersey Mike's online. And right now, if you do it online, Jersey Mike's will hook you up with 10% off. Did you know that Jersey Mike's has been piling their hubs subs high with sliced to order meats, cheeses, and fresh veggies since 1956? Did you know that? They've been around for a while. There, there are some OGs at the Jersey Mike's. I knew that part. I think is it an East Coast thing where you you just when you're from the East Coast that's when you really have a connection with the, with the big ass sub or is that all parts of the country and I, I never know what this stuff I I, f- I know that I grew up with it and it really was a beach thing like you would go to the beach yeah uh, so so up, all up and down the East Coast the Jersey Shore the Delaware Shore these massive sub places so Jersey Mike's has to have it, it, there's no doubt on the Jersey Shore what's your favorite sub. I'm, I love like the Italian, uh, you know, the grinder up in up in New England, the hoagie. If you're in Philly, I love the Italian style. I, I, that's why it's in my blood. You know, I'm half Italian. I grew up with it as a kid. My mother going to Ala Terry's here in Washington D.C. It's been here I, I don't know a hundred years on Sundays with my grandfather and going to the back counter, the deli counter there, and coming out with some some delicious spiced Italian olives. A little of the uh, giardinera is the, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. And then there's some of the meats, you know, capicola, a little uh, mm. uh, brujute, and then, oh. you know, fresh fresh buffalo mozzarella. And uh. we might we'd have sandwiches. Pretty good. I'm starving right now. This is an outrage. Well, get 10% off when you order online at jerseymikes.com slash BS. Get in, get out. Get eating at jerseymikes.com slash BS. BS. They have to be in the running for a presenting sponsor for House of Carbs. I don't. I don't. I. I mean, I don't know what they're waiting for, frankly. But because uh, <laughs> well, look, you know, there's no sponsors right now. It's wide open. The playing we, we field is wide open. This yet. is the, yeah. We're gonna have sponsors. This is, free, this is the House of Carbs free agency. It starts at twelve oh one, July the fourth, or July the fifth. First episode drops and the free agency to be a sponsor on House of Carbs. That would be hilarious. Come at me. Come find me. You could be in my driveway at 1201. I'll come out and say hi. That would be hilarious. Woj tweets at like 1203. Sources, Jersey Mike's honing in on House of Carbs pod. Uh, I hope that happens. All right. Free agency primer. I'm going to throw some names at you. And you tell me if you get excited for the fit. They, this is just this okay. would be my dream scenario for just me enjoying the players and where I think they should go. Okay? I like this. I like this. Blake Griffin to the Phoenix Suns. Four years, hundred and thirty million. I, I like the idea of it better than I think I'm gonna like the reality of it. What's wrong with the reality of it? 
He's a, he, you wrote this in the column today. He's he's only he can only play fifty five to sixty games a season at at best. Right. And he has, to his own credit, reinvented himself. He can no longer play above the rim. It doesn't seem. I mean, I don't know where the medical science. Now the Suns do have a reputation uh, for a very innovative, um, forward thinking medical staff and training. Uh, group, so oh, so do the maybe... Clippers. Oh wait, no, it's the complete opposite. Sorry. <laughs> maybe Blake in those guys' hands gets back some of that bounce. You don't. There isn't a long history of guys getting back their bounce. Yep. But what Blake can do is facilitate, and you know, that be a kind of a a, a double threat, tri- triple threat as a facilitator, and they do have those nice young kids around there. Yeah. And they do have some nice bets there, too. So I, I like the idea of it. I just worry that, like, you know, a year from now, people will be like, uh, we paid all that money for Blake Griffin, and he can't play. I think he is a high-ceiling, low-basement free agent. And and I wrote in my Clippers piece today, uh, very similar to Amara Stoudemire in 2010, where you're getting him, and... If you strike oil, you're getting one of the 12 best guys in the league and you're getting an all-star forward and somebody who could be the focal point of your offense. And if it doesn't work out, now you're trapped with this injured guy who's destroying your cap. I think two things that I like for the Suns here. One is that it's a little shorter. It's four years, not five. Stoudemire was five years, 100. Four years, that first year is great. That's like st- new car sticker price. And the last... Well, by the way... He he can't play till till December, so it's not even you don't get him for the first full year. True, and that and that's a, a real concern, and I wonder if that's going to affect his leverage with this stuff. But first year new car sticker price, last year is an expiring contract, so the only two years that are really a threat are year two and year three. And I think if you're the Suns, you have this young up and coming team anyway. You have Booker, who I think is special and really has a chance. Me too. Me too. Love Josh Booker. Jackson might be special. Not sure. Still, still weird to me that him and his agents were so intent on pushing him to Phoenix over Boston, when Boston is just a much better team and a better organization. And I'm not saying as a Celtics fan, it's just like if you just want to win, um, why wouldn't you go to Boston? It was like they were thinking about a better situation for him, just minutes only, which is What's a weird. What's wrong with that? He he has. A very short window. Somebody on the ringer has made this observation. It's very astute, I believe. These guys on these rookie contracts have a pretty short window to go uh, make make their mark. And if you're blocked by a bunch of dudes, that's not helpful. Tate. He'd, he would be blocked by a bunch of dudes in Boston. Tate, you're the tiebreaker. If you were Josh Jackson, would you rather have played for the Celtics or the Suns? I think I'm going for the future, so the Suns. And Devin Booker takes my shots. I get I just play defense. But I understand what you're saying. Tatum's a better fit for the Celtics. Just be happy with Tatum, Bill. You you guys are probably right, and I think this is a clear case of me just being a homer. I it, it obviously is he's gonna get more minutes. He gets to do Josh Jackson stuff, low spotlight. You're you're right. I changed my mind. I think he, he made the right move. He doesn't want the spotlight right now, I don't think. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this much. I'm rooting against him. Hope he never develops a jump shot. How not dare, very nice. How dare he doesn't want to play like for my Josh favorite Jackson. team. <laughs> so, Blake Griffin to the Suns or the Heat. I hope that happens. I still, I'm a still a big Blake Griffin believer. I think I love Sharks' uh, point forward piece this week. I think you could run the offense through him. I wonder as, as, Scary it was to, as it was to watch him become a below the rim guy for the most part this last season. I wonder if he can finally get healthy. If that was an aberration, I just think, you know, if you're the Suns, maybe it's not four years one thirty, maybe it's four years one ten or whatever. But I, I think it's it's worth the chance, man. That's a really fun team if that works out. You got Devin Booker, you got Josh Jackson. You got Bledsoe, you got Blake Griffin, you have a bunch of young forwards playing above the rim. It's a fun team. I hope that happens. What's your dream destination for Blake? I love I love him in Miami. Okay, why? I, I'm still blown away by the job that Spolster did last year, finishing the season at 30 and 11 with yeah. that team. And 
I think uh, Miami is is poised to make big noise this off season. I think they're ready to like retool the big the, the big piece that I can't get my head around is what to do with Dragic because he was a very important to that thirty and eleven stretch. Yeah, I know Tyler Johnson, um, you know, is 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 a potential sort of trade chit, but I don't know what you, the the best version of Miami. Um, looks like at this stage because they have all these moving pieces. James Johnson's definitely going to move on. He's going to go make a bunch of money. Um, I, that's a mistake. But, well, he should stay. He's going to make a bunch of money for some, you know, for himself. I know, you know but they should try to it. keep him. He he played well for them and the training staff and the culture there, I think, pushed him to another level. That's a, People always underestimate that stuff. They think like, oh, all right, now I've figured it out, and they go somewhere else. And it's like, no, the reason you succeeded was because of where you were and what your culture was and everything. I, 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 I'm biased with this one too, but not, uh, not in a deleterious way. I just don't know if Hayward makes sense for them as much as Griffin does. Cause they already have a bunch of swingmen, you know, and maybe that maybe the more swingmen, the merrier, but Blake, I think could be a real impact guy for them. Put him with Whiteside. Mm. Um, run the offense through him, have all those guys come on. I, I don't know. I just, I like that fit too. I, I would love to see him go to one of those two spots. I think it makes the most sense. Um, Kyle Lowry. Minnesota would be really fun for him. I don't know if I'm, he'll, I'm, he'll pick I, that, but that would be my number one choice for him. What do you have? So the two things that uh, I saw in, in uh, reading up on what does this free agency uh, insanity might look like. In the first place, we have to figure out whether or not Lowry and Ibaka are a package deal because of what that agent is going to try and do. I don't remember the agent's name, but I think he reps both Andy Ibaka Miller. and Lowry. Yeah. Oh, Andy Miller. Right, right, right. Um, I love the concept of Lowry in Minnesota. I saw, I think Zach Lowe wrote about it a little bit. Um, I think that is a Super interesting team. Um, they become immediately. What, what, what would you say the ceiling is like a like a four seed? And maybe not a three seed, but definitely like a four seed with so Lowry. So a couple and, things with Minnesota though. First of all, they'd have to trade Rubio to to carve out some of the space. And I got to be honest, if I was a GM, Rubio would be on my team. I thought he played really well the last couple months. He's got he's thirteen million dollars a year, which is nothing. He's a bargain. He's I think he's twenty six. And if I'm a team like Utah and my choice is overpay George Hill or go try to get Jeff Teague or whatever to try to make Gordon Hayward happy, I would let let those dudes go and just trade for Rubio because I like his contract and I think he's still getting better and he's a good defender, you know? Uh, I So one of the problems with the whole Minnesota thing is that we found out last year that Andrew Wiggins just has a lot of holes in his game. And I think he he's the classic like fantasy players and people who watch basketball on in YouTube clips think Andrew Wiggins is really good and and the reality is he's a horrible defensive player. He's just horrible. So and, this is where we're gonna see this is the true <laughs> test for Tibbs, right? They were an abominable defensive team last year. And he was a big reason and, for it. And so is Zach Levine. Right. You know, and both of those guys Completely had more value than they should have had. We all believe that Tibbs would come in there and teach those kids, and it was, it was pretty apparent he didn't have enough time with them, nor did he have enough in the way of like on-court assets to help them understand the correct way to play the play defense the way he wanted them to play defense. I, I think um, the Wiggins he could thing. Have that. I think the Wiggins thing is is really inexplicable because I remember I went to uh, they had this. Um, when the when the four best teams played the year of the Wiggins and B draft, and it was like Kansas and oh yeah, you went to Chicago for that. Yeah. Who, it was who Kansas was it? And Duke, the champ, the Kansas, Duke, yeah, yeah. Jabari was there, and Embiid yeah. and Wiggins and all these guys, and Wiggins and and uh, Jabari were matched up against each other. And in the second half, by the way, I went to that game with our friend Hershey, Burke Magnus, and Connor Show. Pretty funny. All the greats. <laughs> Two, two, two of those three are now uh, the the direct reports to Jen Skipper. Anyway, uh, the the big 
thing I left that game thinking other than just being enamored with Embiid. Well, all of us were like, what the fuck is that? Like it was like seeing a UFO. Um, but, but Wiggins defended Jabari in the second half and Jabari couldn't get a shot off. Yeah. And I left that game thinking, wow, Wiggins. I mean, that guy, that kid, that guy could be an A-list defender. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to that guy. I, how is he a zero now defensively? All these stats are out right. that he's like w- maybe, one of the four worst defenders in the league. Well, the other way to think of it, maybe, you know, he stopped freshman Jabari. Congratulations. Yeah, that, that is true. But it's just like he had all the tools is my point. It was just this. Right, right, sure. Six foot seven, super athletic swingman who seemed to have really good instincts. And now he's kind of a joke. But, uh, you know, I, I do think they need a vet. That's another team like what we talked about when you need the vet. And uh, Lowry be fun. I, how are Lowry and Ibaka a package deal? That makes no sense to me. Who wants Ibaka? I just, that, we don't know how old he the, is. The, I love Serge Ibaka, but do we know how old he is? That's what the internet be saying. The internet be saying they're a package deal right now. That's what that, that uh, agent's trying to do. I don't disagree with you. I was not that enamored of Ibaka. I love the idea of Ibaka and Tucker so much in Toronto that yeah. before the playoffs started, I, know. I agreed to go yeah. ahead and wager on the possibility I of Toronto as the Eastern myself. Conference representative. I mean, it was not uh, a bad idea. It wasn't a bad bet. It was like we talked ourselves into it. We went on the podcast and, and went through all of the, the kind of reasons, and then um, Cleveland reminded us. The king reminded us Listen, of who sits on the throne. We we make bets based on on good odds. The odds were out That's of whack. True. The odds yeah, we of, got fourteen to one or fifteen to one. Yeah, if you played that series fifteen times, maybe LeBron gets hurt in one of them. It was worth the odds, but yeah, it was disappointing. Hey, House, do you remember the last time you bought a car? It's been a while, to be honest with you. Was it a good experience? No, it was terrible. I don't understand why, in the 20th, 21st century, how you have to go in and see a person and they jerk you around and sit there. I, this is the thing that drove me crazy. It was 2010. We went to the showroom. My kid was uh, nine weeks old, should not have been sitting in a showroom for much more than a half hour. And the SOBs made us sit there and sit there and sit there while they figured out whatever their, their financing BS was going to be. Yeah. Drive me crazy. Well, thank God it's 2017. Carvana, the nation's leading online car company. You can buy a car online from over 7,000 certified company-owned cars. Then have it delivered to you as soon as the next day. Or pick it up at the world's first coin-operated car vending machine. You're I need right. to see this. I don't understand it. Yeah. Every car comes with a seven-day return policy. See if the car fits your life. Return it for a refund if it doesn't. And you don't have to have your nine-week-old kid sitting in the showroom for five hours in his own poop. Better than a 50-minute test drive, right? Carvana doesn't have all those salespeople, so you don't have to pay for them either. That means some serious savings. Skip the dealership. Buy a car online. Check out Carvana.com slash BS to learn more. That's Carvana.com slash BS. It is the new way to buy a car. Hey, there's one more way I might have gotten sick last week. I took my son to one of those batting cage slash arcade slash miniature golf places. Sure. If the world's next plague comes out of America, it's going to be from one of those places. I mean, those bats, the the putters, just touching those things. What do you think this is the last time anybody used a handy wipe on one? What about the arcades? Do you think they just wipe off the joystick like once every seven years? They they wipe off the joystick never. Next time my son wants to go to one of those places, I'm just going to suggest that we go to Haiti. Um, I mean, imagine me in there after using a five-star lotion. (laughs) You can cut that out. No, it was good. I I liked it. Um, All right, more more, uh, free agents. Hold on. Ready? Gordon Hayward. So here's my question to you. Yeah. It's it's now uh, 1045 West Coast time in, in L.A. Yeah. Right this second, where do you think Brad Stevens is? Oh, I like it. Uh, I think he's home FaceTiming with Gordon Hayward. 
Uh, I don't like that. I, look, you know, the, the thing, one thing we miss out on here in the U.S. that the, the Brits get right for the Premier League, this, their, their, their run up to, to free agency, their version of free agency in soccer, yeah. they have like the crazy paparazzi. So like right now, there would be paparazzi uh, all outside of Gordon Hayward's house. He wouldn't be able to go anywhere today. And the same would be true of, of, of the Celtics and, and other suitors, you know. Yeah. Like, I want to know what the flight plan looks like for flights from Boston to Utah today. I'm interested in seeing how many flights, you know, what private jets are, are going across. I want to know whether any houses were for, are, are up for rent in Gordon Hayward's neighborhood this week. And I'd like to see if anybody named Brad Smith perhaps <laughs> has, has done a short-term rental in Utah. Stephen Bradley. That's the kind of stuff I'm into. I, I actually think they have a, he had visits arranged with Miami and Boston, but I don't know if he was going to them or they they were going to him or whatever's going on. It's uh, you know, the salary cap thing really screwed them, and and screwed a couple of these teams here with the the irony of ironies. The Warriors kicking the shit out of everybody knocked the cap down because they just had less playoff games, and um, and Cleveland too. Yeah, everybody. The two very best teams. Before the season started, everybody was like, God damn it, it's just Cleveland and Golden State, and it's going to be boring. There's no reason to play the regular season, no reason to play the playoffs. And then only one, there was only one, one, one playoff loss between those two teams until they met in the finals. Let me tell you something, House. This never would have happened if David Stern was still alive. <laughs> that is a fact, brother. That is an absolute fact. Draymond would have been suspended again for last year's nut punch. And he ended game five. I was like, what? That happened a year ago. Now he's getting suspended again. The Cavs-Boston series unquestionably goes at least six. And after the Kawhi thing, uh, I think like five Warriors get suspended. Zaza gets suspended for three games. And then Curry gets suspended for laughing. And I don't know. They just figure it out. But yeah, listen. David Stern knew what he was doing back in the day. There was no 89-game total playoffs in David no Stern's chance. era. No chance. Zero percent chance that nope. those two teams, would only there would only be one loss in the, in the whole playoffs until they met in the finals. Yeah. Zero percent chance of David that. Stern's cackling. He's, he's popping a blunt and cackling. I have to have him on soon. He's kind of he's kind of resurfaced as a media presence. I, I think he hates my guts. I'm almost positive, but... Uh, I would love to have him on, and he can just be mean to me. I'll be, Offer I'm him a Jersey Mike. Maybe that'll help. Oh, Jersey Mike's. JerseyMikes.com slash BS. Are you going there right after we finish this? Uh, you know, there is one in the neighborhood here. Okay. I wish they, they could hear this and, and, and know that I'm just coming. Just get ready. So they can start making my sandwich now. Where's your dream scenario for Gordon Hayward? <sighs> definitely not Boston. Thank you. Well, because you're Definitely not fan. Miami. Yeah, I can't, I don't want him in the East. My my dream scenario is that he stays with Utah, and I think that they have some interesting stuff going on there in Utah. I was really really super duper Im- impressed with with um, Quinn Snyder this season, and I think you know playing with the defensive player of the year. I know that Draymond won it. Draymond deserved it, but Go- Gobert was one A there. Yeah. Playing with a guy that changes games defensively that's got to be fun. The the, the big open item for them is point guard and it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to afford to re-sign George Hill and maybe that'd be a blessing in disguise you your little uh you know nugget there of Ricky Rubio to Utah that is very interesting they still have Derek Favors at an awesome contract he's cheap and he just needs to be a little more durable and a little bit better than last year. <laughs> yeah, that's, and they still have you know some nice veteran players around. I want Hayward to stay in Utah. That's that's what I my personal take on it. I wouldn't be mad at it. I really wouldn't because if he stayed there, you know, I, I if if Stevens he could sign a three year deal. The, the thing for him is that ten years of service. Right. Um, that's in the current collective bargaining agreement. It gets him up, and 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 in that time, if he makes an All NBA team, because um, that 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 really hurt Utah. Him not making the All NBA team this season. I voted if for him. If he gets ten years of service and the All NBA team in the next three years, that's the mega the mega doozy contract that that he can get. You know, uh, I if it wasn't for the Stevens connection, I think he would resign with Utah. I don't I don't see him going to Miami. 
I know I'll probably come to regret this when he signs with Miami in five days, but I really think this comes down to Utah versus Stevens and the connection he has with the guy. And if Steven, if Doc Rivers was Celtics coach, I don't think the Celtics would have a chance. So, you know, if he stays there and he's with Gobert and they figure out what to do at point guard, I do not think the answer is George Hill. Um, they re-signed Joe Engels and they have no chance of winning the finals. I mean, what, what do we tell you? Nobody's beating Golden They're not beating Golden State with that team. But No, but both of those guys are young. Like, the point is to get better. The point is to, you know, play in a place where you're going to get better, get those reps, and then let, you know, you, you can't conquer the, the fates by, you know, choosing what's, what's best for you in terms of what's in front of your nose. And a three-year deal, you know, he, that's the neat thing that these players have come to realize. It's not necessarily the case that they have to go get, you know, the longest deals possible. Um, you know, the super duper stars have been signing two year deals and three year deals, and maybe in some instances, four year deals, and it's worked out for them. Did House of Carbs end up with the Nerdist Podcast Network or Podcast One? No. You know why? Right. That, I didn't even know what the F you were talking about. Because we're I boys. <laughs> Never heard of those things. What is it? You know why House of Carbs ended up on the Ringer Podcast Network? Because you and I are friends. Yeah. And that and Brad Stevens right. and Gordon Hayward are friends. And that's why I think he's going okay. to be a Boston Celtic. Um, All right. Otto Porter. I'm not wishing you luck. Otto Porter. Oh. Uh, Otto Porter. Yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Carmelo says, I'll waive my no trade clause to D.C. The Knicks say, we'd love Otto Porter. Sign and trade Otto Porter to the Knicks for Carmelo Anthony. Are you excited? Shit, probably. <laughs> I have to admit it. Here's the thing. It's a very weird moment. Another, Yet another inflection point for the Washington Almost Bullets. We are just off the heels of the very best season in, in 40 years. 40 years, the best regular season, and the playoff run was wonderful. It was illuminating. John Wall validated uh, you know, everything that he'd been pining for in terms of recognition and, and uh, you know, his ascendance. He made an all-NBA team deservedly, and he wants respect. And God bless, you know, they're, they, they're on paper a 50-win team, a 50-plus win team in the East. They, with the guard combo when Beal and Wall are healthy, can go up against anybody. I don't know how many teams in the league beat both Golden State and Cleveland last season. Washington did that. Um, this Porter thing is such a conundrum because it's a, can, of well, Let me interrupt you hit. for one second. It is a conundrum that you have faced for whatever reason over and over and over again as a Bullets Wizards fan. The young guy coming it's up true. who's now eligible for some contract that he probably doesn't deserve and you're kind of screwed either way. I don't know how many times this has happened to you. Well, I mean, I mean we're going we, back to like Cal Larry Chaney and go. Yeah. Which is probably <laughs> fine. It was the right decision to let Larry Hughes go 10 years ago. It was the wrong decision to re-sign um, uh, Antoine Jameson after you re-sign uh, Gilbert. Now, Gilbert, you had to gamble that he was going to come back from that knee injury and be able to resume what he had been doing. Well, go back, go back further. A, what about Rashad, Rashid Wallace? That was a that was a win now moment. Rashid Wallace, um, but you knew you were going to have my to, man Rod Strickland. You knew you were going to have to pay Rashid at some point. So you did the win now move for Strickland. You did Which the had a, made a lot of sense. You did the I don't uh -oh, kill him on that one. Oh, Jawan Howard's getting courted by Miami. Whoops, it was an illegal offer. Oh, let's keep him for crazy amounts well, that of money. Was David Stern. Yeah. David Stern gave one out to his boy A Poland back then. Bradley Beal last year. He's worth the max. Money has gone crazy. They did the right thing. Yeah. They I'm, did the right thing. That's what I'm saying. It's a conundrum. It's worked out for you sometimes. Other times it has not worked out. I would say Bradley Beal. It's worked out so far, but he might be in a hospital bed in five months. Like, who knows? The guy's had trouble staying How on the court. How dare you? I, listen, he's had trouble staying on the court. I think do that. That's If you did that one over again, no brainer. You would absolutely do it. But I, 
If you I, can get 75 games out of Brad Beal every season, and you know, part of the thing that went into the Brad Beal analysis is he is done growing, uh, finally, and you know, he, he had a different training regimen last summer that, that apparently paid dividends. He was on the court 74 games, I think, this season he played, which is a perfect number. That's all we need out of Brad Beal. I went to but game. The, I the went to game thing, seven. I went to game seven. Celtics Wiz, and I literally watched the hair sprout from his chest. He left that game <laughs> with a nice. A man in front of your uh, own yeah, eyes. He left that game. He had pubes. He had chest hair. It was great. He had armpit hair. He had the whole yeah. thing. It's a yeah. full puberty performance by Bradley Beal. Congratulations Lordy, Lordy. to him. Otto Porter for Carmelo. You know what? I'm not a, what I would wouldn't break my heart with Otto Porter would be a sign and trade because I think that Kelly Oubre could be next season as soon as next season like sixty four cents on the dollar. I agree for for Otto preaching the choir. But um, I, I think you need to turn and, Otto into something. I would not. I would not pay him a hundred and plus million. There, there's some guys being thrown around in the hundred plus million range, like Contavious Caldwell Pope, people like that. Tate, you watch basketball? Yeah. I Ever do. watch Contavious Caldwell Pope and said to yourself, "When's he coming to town? I'm getting tickets." Yeah, <clears throat> never. No, Georgia was probably the highlight. Definitely not with the Pistons. Never with the Pistons. I, I just the problem with Otto is somebody's going to put a sheet in front of him. Okay. And the, you can't just let him go. You could stretch Jan Mahimni for the next seven years. You realize that? I'd like to stretch him back to uh, France or uh, <laughs> French Suriname or wherever the F he came from. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Couldn't get on the court in the playoffs. We just needed a body to go out there and play. Just play. I don't know what to tell you. There were I, the legacy of the legacy of this year and and the contracts we've had, or the contracts that teams have tried to get out from under and all that stuff, is just how reckless those deals were. And this that last season it will was, go down in the history in the annals, and then in my case the annals of. <laughs> of extraordinarily short-sighted lack of imagination. Do you understand that Jan Mahinmi was the big free agent signing for Washington after striking out on Kevin Durant, who never even came anywhere near Washington, and Al Horford, who they had a genuine chance at getting, and look at the price that Boston paid for him. How great that contract looks now. I, um, I would do it and, again. And for what he, he I, Of course, if, so, would, so would Washington if they... If we could have beat out Boston, I but, just never. Um, I having followed the league for my entire life, I just never understood the mindset of "oh, we have money, we got to spend it." When think year of after all the guys year, that got paid last year. Ugh, I mean, you would have been better off not spending any money and then being able to cherry pick the guys who are going to be available this year, like Rubio. That's a fact. That's or a fact. or Lou Williams. Absolutely true. Or oh, you need to trade Eric Gordon to go sign Chris Paul. We're sitting right here. Trade him to us. It or Kemba been, Walker. It would have been a. 10,000 times better to have let free agency happen in July and then sign somebody as a, you know, somebody like Nene. To, Nene just played for Houston for like a million and a half. I know. And was, was the single reason that they, well, not the single reason, but a determining factor in why they, they ended up losing to the Spurs. Him getting hurt changed the outcome of it that did. series. It, it was the tipping point injury for them. And, you know, Bogut for the Warriors in 2016 was a little like that too. Sometimes, Ooh. sometimes it's not the injury and the the caliber of the player itself, but it, it's like a Jenga stack, and you pull yeah, the one wrong the piece out, and the whole stack just kind of gets screwed up. And the Warriors, it's like all of a sudden they were too small and they couldn't protect the rim. Um, but Bogut's an unrestricted free agent, right? Hold on, let's let's throw Tate some red meat because he's been producing this podcast all day. <laughs> How happy would you be on a scale of one to a hundred if the if the Hornets traded Kemba and turned the team over to Malik Monk? Like Monk plays the point guard? Just whatever. Monk Monk becomes the creator for slash facilitator slash I want one year of Kemba Dwight pick and roll. Okay. That's all I want. One year. To, see if it works. Because you hate yourself? No, just because I want to see if it would work. Has it ever has Kemba wow. ever successfully run the pick and roll? Yeah. 
He can he can run it with Cody Zeller. He can with run who? it with Dwight. Cody Zeller. Co- <laughs> Has that's, that, that's, that's tough your times. sample. It's tough times, but I think he can try it for one year, and then you know he's an all star now. All the players love him. He got that sportsmanship award. Kemba, yeah. he is a great guy. Everybody yeah. loves him. Everyone loves him. Send House. him to New York. Yeah. May that moment live on forever. Tate saying, "I want one year of Kemba and Dwight pick and roll." We, we're not going to let him forget it. Let's cut that out, and I we can just play out. that I as might an tweet audio. It out as a quote right now. I want one year to preserve Kemba it. Dwight pick and roll. <laughs> That's the best. With what Mike, about with Michael Kemba King Dwight Gilchrist fart and roll? What about that? It. With who? The, the Kemba Dwight fart and roll. That that the seems like a, has more lasting power. <laughs> Well, the spacing that Michael Kidd Gilchrist will create for those guys should really be good. Let's talk about propercloth.com. Every guy knows it's hard to find a dress shirt that fits. Maybe the collar's too tight, the sleeves are too long, the shirt's too loose. Or maybe you're like house where your weight just fluctuates by 25 pounds depending on how much you're eating. That's fair, right? Do you have like two separate wardrobes? I'm in a, I'm in the summer mode right now, um, nice and light. But I'm going to Jersey Mike's for lunch right now. That's a that's a five pound weekend coming up. Yeah. Well, ordering a custom fit shirt has never been easier thanks to Proper Cloth. Create a custom shirt size in seconds by answering ten easy questions, no measure required. Choose from over twenty collar styles, ten cuff styles, five hundred fabric styles, from classic to business, to completely customize your shirt. Get the style you want, all high quality, with the absolute best quality and craftsmanship, starting at just eighty dollars. Proper cloth guarantees a perfect fit, meaning that if somehow your shirt doesn't fit perfectly because you just went to Jersey Mike's, they will remake it for free. Stop wearing shirts that don't fit. Look your best. Go to propercloth.com slash BS. Enter gift code BS to save $20 on your first shirt. House, you just wear golf shirts, so this doesn't really help you that much. No, I, I wear dress shirts, and a uh, big shout-out to Proper Cloth. They're a nice contributing sponsor occasionally on the Shuck House. So I've, I've definitely sung the praises of the proper cloth. All right. Well, go to propercloth.com slash BS and check out the deals there. Good day for the sponsors. We get good, good ones today. Um, and we should mention SeatGeek House. Have you taken your son to a baseball game and used the SeatGeek promo code? Oh, we're, we're, we're overdue. I'm, I'm now holding out until they get rid of Blake Trinan. I know that's very okay. deep Washington deep one. silliness, but I'm yeah. not. The, they have a historically bad bullpen and it's it's I'm I'm my feelings are hurt. Paul Millsap? Where do you want him to go? San Antonio. Oh. I was hoping you'd say that. I think that. he'd be perfect for them. You'd keep Aldridge and Millsap? I would get rid of Aldridge. He is his his welcome has worn out. Whether <laughs> You could still get, you know, contribution out of him or not during the regular season, you know, pro- probably so. But um, the the Spurs fans flipped on him so quickly, and he just stunk in those playoffs. Yeah, I think it's a hard hard spot for him. They, I, the Spurs are quietly on the sidelines. They're going to do something. I really think Millsap is exactly their kind of guy. I wonder. I still think Aldridge on the right team. Um, with his head on straight, with the right coach in the right offense, is a real asset. I think one of the reasons. So who is that? I don't know. I was trying to figure that out and could not. Could be Miami. Wouldn't Miami might be a decent fit for him? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, that's 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 a good idea. I just feel like the way they used him, and he's definitely a diva. There's no question. And that was always the rap right. on him going back to Portland. Is he's always. Yeah. He's always figuring out what's in it for him. Why is this guy getting attention? I'm not. And he was, you know, the Spurs were kind of hoping you put him in a Spurs culture and you and he'll fit in and he'll buy in. And it's pretty clear now that he didn't totally buy in. He wanted more post ups. Um, it just they didn't, properly it didn't work. asked a lot of him. They asked of him to be the player that he walked in there saying he could be, and he just wasn't up to it. No, and. You know, he's kind of become a stretch forward as a rebound for a lot of money. I think he's better than that. I, I, If I had him, I I still think he's a devastating low post player when he wants to be. You know, there's really not a lot of those guys left. Milwaukee, every time they threw it to Greg Monroe and he really wanted to score, the guy was unstoppable unless, like, four guys in the league were guarding him. 
So you know what's crazy? You know what I think his single best skill is is mid range game. Mid range game. I think he's awesome from twelve to sixteen. Well, that's feet. what I mean. I, I I'm not talking about low post in the traditional like Kevin McHale way. I'm just saying like okay, you throw him the ball. I guess low post is the wrong word. So maybe like mid post, but that's he's really good at it. And uh, he can't keep up with um, Harden and Chris Paul. He can't go to Houston, right? Because he can't run well enough. I mean that team might not be running as much. I I don't know what to make of Millsap. He's thirty two. That's the problem I have. It begins and ends right there. But I like your Spurs call. I thought I think that's a good one. I thought Denver would have been interesting too if they could have figured out how to you know because they they good veteran presence. They yeah, have they the asset. They've been shopping for a four. Yeah. Um, putting him with Jokic. Something fun about that. You know, another guy I was thinking for Denver was Rubio. He could be really good for them. Put uh, the Rubio-Jokic combo. Now you have like two passing geniuses on the same team. Now everybody's looking for each other. I thought that would be fun. Uh, one more. One more guy for you. Uh, oh. Quickly, I'm starving over here. Oh, what happens to Iguodala? The Golden State Warriors do the correct thing <laughs> and give him what he wants, pay the man, and face whatever the most unprecedented tax in the history of the league is because no franchise is more valuable than those sons of bitches, and nobody's made more money than those dudes over the completely – now, look, I was going to call it lucky. To some extent, you have to give them credit for having – a vision, but also lucky because they've had a sustained run of health uh, that also feels kind of unprecedented over the last three years. Um, just pay the man and pay the tax. That's my answer. I think I agree. Are we sure Andrea Godala is still going to be an impact guy over the next couple of years? It kind of doesn't matter. I think right? it does matter, though. He, the, the point is. Let me to, let me give you the counter. Let it, me give you the counter. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. They have they have the second best player in the league. Although you could argue after the finals, maybe he's one B. They have Curry, who's somewhere between four and six, and Clay and Draymond, who are somewhere in the fifteen range. People are going to want to play with these guys. Every year, they're going to be able to just cherry pick veterans who are chasing a ring, who want to be a role player, who just. Want to pass through? It's gonna be like the '60s Celtics. '60s Celtics used to do this. They just grab older guys, add them to the team for a year. They're doing a ring. I wonder if McCaw can fill some of the Iguodala um, role, and there's some there's some old dude they can sign for one year just to just to kind of do it. Vince I, Carter. Oh, Vince Carter. Could, us. That's that, not crazy. That's the guy. Could that's they, not crazy. Could you could your blueprint basically be we're paying these four guys and that's it, and then we're doing role players the rest of the way? I I think it'd be very dangerous to give him a big contract. And I and you know the problem for them is he's somebody's gonna pay him. He's valuable. He's still a valuable swingman. He's a great locker room guy. Um, I if I my prediction is they're gonna play poker with him and bank on the fact that he's this very ambitious guy who's got all these different things going on in Silicon Valley and all these uh, media empire stuff, and he's not going to want to go to, like, Milwaukee. You know, he wants to be in the mix. Where well, the, the other is. thing, can't understate this, loves the golf, plays a ton of golf. San Francisco has among the country's very best, you know, some outstanding options. Uh, I need to get him on the Shack House. I need, I need some Iggy time on a, on a Shack House podcast. But, you know, that whole lifestyle, everything about living in San Francisco, right? The thing that made Kevin Durant tipped for Durant, I believe, ultimately. He just wanted to live in, in, the, in a cool place. Right. The other thing with Iggy, I'm looking up how much money he's made. He was on a $12 million deal. He's making more than Curry last year. Yeah, he's already made over $110 million. Because he had the big Philly contract, which was over 50 million. Oh, over seventy-five million, and then the Warriors contract he signed. That doesn't mean he's not going to make a decision for money, but he might decide take a pay cut, 
take less, but um, with Golden State, I'm on the best team. My profile is the highest possible it can be, and this allows me to do all these other things. But th- I just don't see them paying 12 to 15 million a year for him. I don't think it's realistic. So if if so maybe somebody- he'll take the home count, hometown discount. If somebody's smart and they have the cap space and they need a veteran guy and it's somebody that can push them from 42 wins to 50 or whatever, like that on July 1st, they should, they should put his feet to the fire. Here you go. Iggy. I'd, I'd Here's love him 60 million for three. I'd oh, you like him for Washington? Washington? I wouldn't rule out the Warriors with Paul George in a year, just for the record. Uh, just not going to, not ruling them out. Goodness gracious. Just they I'm can't be ruled out. I'm, I don't think any marquee free agent that's not LeBron or Westbrook can be ruled out with the Warriors over these next couple of years. They just you just can't. Um all right. That's it. I Good. We, Jersey Mike's I'm coming for you. I think we covered everybody. Who gets yeah. the do you think Curry actually gets the max on Saturday? Apparently they're gonna give him the two hundred million like right on Saturday. Is that true? That's what because Aisha wanted it. That's the word on the street, but like, I don't know. I feel hey. like Durant Durant deserves a max too. So who who gets it and how's that play out? Durant can sign one year deals until he's he he wants to be done signing one year deals. House, if you were Cleveland, would you have traded the the uh, Kyrie for the fourth pick, Eric Bledsoe, and Bender? No. Would you have done a Tate? No. I think Kyrie is the best. I would not have done it either. Yeah. Would you Would you have rolled back this year's team? Because that's what they're doing. That's what I would do. That's my number one recommendation. That's what I would do too. There's Here's... a couple bit bit pieces that might make a difference on the margins. Like uh, Corver didn't give them anything. Darren Williams was limited. Channing Fry basically couldn't get on the f- court. Like all those guys are replaceable, and you might get something out of those spots. Yeah, but otherwise, just just roll out the same team. Yeah, my thing with uh, my thing with Cleveland is this: they're going to be in the buyout game for Carmelo and Wade in February. Don't panic now; it's a long season. All that matters is February, March, April, May, June. They really played well in that finals and the Warriors were just better. The Warriors were completely healthy. Um, the thing that is a nut cruncher is they, if they hadn't choked in game three, oh, that series choke. could have been an all timer. I watched it. I watched it last weekend and God damn, that was a choke. It was you a know, choke. They were up six and JR had a wide open three that instead of just taking it, he hopped like five feet to the left and took an off balance version of the same wide open three he had. And then they just collapsed defensively. They choked on the two on one. It was a choke job. And it's funny because, you know, this, this has happened in the finals before where the right team won and they won in five and it was pretty decisive. And yet you go back and you go, Man, if 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 one thing had happened differently, I don't know what happens in this series, you know? Like the O nine O nine Magic Lakers, which everyone now remembers as a decisive Lakers victory, and it actually wasn't. Like, no, Courtney Lee. Well, that was game two, but then game four, remember freaking Jama uh, Jameer Nelson? They're down three they're up three with like forty seconds left, and he's forty feet off Derek Fisher, who just launches the tying three, like it's these little moments like that that flip these finals that are closer than we remember. And I think yeah. the Warriors would have won that finals, but the Cavs yeah. should have won game three, and they decisively won game four. I think the the longer that kept going, the better chance they had because they had two guys that the Warriors couldn't stop. You know? Kyrie. It's true. Kyrie was just, even in that game three, like, oh, my God. I, I, I just can't get over the, the shots Warriors he's thought the same thing. Yeah. So anyway, my point is, do not trade Kyrie. Um, okay. Good. We're on. We're on board. I have to go. I'm dying. Daddy needs some food. All right. Uh, House, House of, carbs? of Carbs. July fifth. Who are the guests? We have Adam Rappaport, uh, Bon Appetit editor in chief, and and uh, f- f- food uh, dilettante extraordinaire. 
Juliet Lewis, we are bringing back Juliet a version Lewis, of what actress. used to be. <laughs> you really oh, are no. hungry. <laughs> Juliet Lewis, California star. <laughs> Is she going to talk about Kate Fear? Kate, edit this. <laughs> no, Juliet we're not Lewis, editing this. Kate, do not bitch. edit this. You mother effer. Are we going to talk about Kate Fear well, and I'm De Niro? Juliet. What does Juliet like to drink? I'm sending her a case of her, of her very best beverage. Are you talking God about Juliet damn, Lewis or Juliet Littman? Who, which one of them Son likes of to drink? Son of a bitch. Damn it. Well, we know Juliet Lewis likes to drink. <laughs> I'm sending Juliet Littman a case of her favorite. I got excited to talk about how we're not doing food news, but we're doing food news. And we're coming up with a different name for it. Now, come we up with a the same name. For, no. for Obi-Wan Jacoby. We can keep the name. And then we had an awesome conversation with Danny Chow. I can't wait to hear your wife's reaction to Nashville hot chicken. Mm. She's there right but now. We had a great conversation with Danny Chow about the Nashville hot chicken and the story that he wrote last year and his trip down there. All right. What it did to his body. Thanks again to Proper Cloth. Ordering a custom fit shirt has never been easier. Create a custom shirt size in seconds by just answering 10 simple se- uh, questions. Custom choose from over 20 collar styles, 10 cuff styles, 500 different fabrics from classic to business. Stop wearing shirts that don't fit. Start looking your best with a custom fitted shirt. Go to Proper Cloth dot com slash bs enter gift code bs to save twenty dollars off your first shirt and thanks so much to carvana joe ha- don't let joe house's kid sit in his own poop in a car room anymore now you got carvana the nation's leading online car company you can buy a car online from over seven thousand certified company owned cars have it delivered to you as soon as the next day or pick it up at the world's first coin-operated car vending machine, seven-day return policy, skip the dealership, buy a car online. Check out Carvana.com slash BS to learn more. That is Carvana.com slash BS. Don't forget to subscribe to House of Carbs. Do you have a new vocal inflection for that podcast along the lines of Shack House? Or are you going to work on that? I'm, I'm working on it. You know, So far, we've been using the echo effect for House of Carbs. I like that. So that might be... But I might come. I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. Don't forget to go to theringer.com. Check out my uh, Clippers column. And then here's the schedule for next week. We are going to do a podcast on Monday, the day before July 4th. If something insane happens over the weekend, I'm making nephew Kyle come in with me, and we're just going to do a Sunday pod. If there has to be an emergency pod, if the bat signal is sent, we will be there. House, you're, you're going to be involved. I'm going to make you come on. I'm always available. You yeah. know that. All right. Say hi to Jersey Mike for me. Enjoy the weekend, everybody.